The publication of Frederick Wortham's Seduction of the Innocent in 1954 marked a significant moment in the history of comic books in the United States. Wortham, a psychiatrist, argued in his book that comic books were contributing to juvenile delinquency by promoting violence, sexual content, and drug use. Some of the claims he made were that certain characters were portrayed as a lesbian or gay partners. He claimed that these elements in comic books were corrupting the minds of young readers and leading them down a path of criminal behavior. Prepare to be astonished by the mind-blowing revelations you'll encounter in this video. As you absorb these facts, you may find yourself questioning whether he was indeed correct. Now let's delve into the origins of comics history. Chapter 1 Seduction of the Innocent, commonly known as DC Comics, suffered a significant blow following Wortham's allegations that Superman had fascist leanings, Wonder Woman was portrayed as a lesbian, and Batman and Robin were depicted as gay partners. In response to the latter claim in 1956, DC introduced a love interest for Batman named Kathy Kane. She, akin to Batman's alter ego, had inherited wealth and shared similarities with Robin's alter ego as a circus performer. Kathy took on the crime-fighting persona of Batwoman. In 1961, sensing that Robin, perpetually a teenager for two decades, was being overlooked, DC introduced Betty Kane, Kathy's niece, as Robin's love interest. Betty admired Batwoman and crafted her own costume and gadgets to become Batgirl. However, Batgirl failed to gain popularity, and when the renowned editor Julius Schwartz assumed control of the Batman titles in 1964, he discontinued Batgirl along with other Bat family members like Batmite and Bathound. Chapter 2 Establishment of the Comics Code Authority Seduction of the Innocent caught the attention of Senator Estes Kefauver. Kefauver had a reputation as a mob hunter, and it was a known fact that the mob had strong connections with the distribution of comics and magazines. He saw Wortham's agenda as a tool he could use against the organized crime within the industry. As a platform from where he could spread his message more efficiently, Wortham appeared before the Senate Subcommittee on Juvenile Delinquency. In testimony before the committee, he compared the comic book industry to Adolf Hitler. The hearing was broadcast on television, which was quickly becoming a new mass medium, and made other media join in. It made headlines on the New York Times' front page. Even if the government didn't act beyond the hearing, and Kefauver lost interest in comics after he was selected as a presidential candidate, the public damage was already done. The hearing was in April, and the same summer 15th publishers went out of business. In response to the growing concern, comic book publishers faced a severe backlash. Parents began canceling subscriptions, and there were instances of mass comic book burnings. This wave of public outcry had a devastating impact on the comic book industry. To address the crisis and regain public trust, comic book publishers established the Comics Code Authority, CCA, later in 1954. The CCA was a self-regulatory body that imposed a set of guidelines on comic book content. These guidelines prohibited the depiction of certain themes, such as excessive violence, gore, and explicit sexuality. Publishers who adhered to the Comics Code could display the CCA seal on their covers, assuring parents and retailers that the content was suitable for children. The establishment of the Comics Code Authority marked a turning point in the comic book industry. The code remained in effect for several decades, shaping the content of comic books until the late 20th century when it gradually lost its influence. The industry underwent further transformations with the rise of alternative and more mature themed comics that challenged the traditional constraints imposed by the Comics Code. Eventually, in 2011, the Comics Code Authority was officially dissolved as a response to changes in the industry and cultural attitudes toward censorship. Chapter 3. Modern Age of Comic Books Homosexual interpretations of Batman and Robin have attracted even more attention during the modern age of comic books, as sexual and LGBT themes became more common and accepted in mainstream comics. Writer Warren Ellis addressed the issue of Batman's sexuality obliquely 
in his comic book The Authority from Image Comics, where he portrayed the character of the Midnighter, a clear Batman pastiche, as openly gay and engaged in a long-term relationship with the Superman analog Apollo. In the summer of 2005, painter Mark Chamberlain displayed a number of watercolors depicting both Batman and Robin in suggestive and sexually explicit poses. DC threatened both artist and the Kathleen Cullen Fine Arts Gallery with legal action if they did not cease selling the works and demanded all remaining art, as well as any profits derived from them. It is difficult to say if this decision was because of the copyrights of the Batman character or his depiction as a gay character. However, in 2006, DC drew widespread media attention by announcing a new lesbian incarnation of the well-known character Batwoman, alongside other lesbian characters such as Gotham City police officer Renee Montoya, police captain Maggie Sawyer, and Catwoman's protege Holly Robinson already existed in the Batman franchise. In 2011, during the New 52, DC introduced Alicia Yo, Barbara Gordon, Batgirl's roommate and friend who is a bisexual trans woman. A few months later, in 2012, Harper Rowe would be introduced. She would go on to become Batman's sidekick and don the moniker Bluebird, and is also a bisexual woman. In 2015, it was revealed that Selena Kyle is bisexual in Catwoman issue number 39, written by Genevieve Valentine, in which she kissed Aiko, her replacement as Catwoman. Harley Quinn was also bisexual and has been in a relationship with the Joker, and more recently, in a non-monogamous relationship with Poison Ivy. In a July 2011 Comic Vine interview, Judd Winnick was asked by staff member Sarah Lima if Jason Todd is bisexual. In response, Winnick stated that Jason's sexual encounter with Talia al Ghul was the first time he was ever in a relationship with someone. Winnick also admitted that he was trying to dodge the question as there are certain things that he is prevented from discussing and DC Comics doesn't like him talking about. Specifically, the DC Comics doesn't like us writers talking about things like characters' non-heterosexual identities, he said. In Batman and Robin issue number 25 in 2011, when Jason is strip-searched naked by a group of male soldiers and told they would use technology to scan him without touching his body, he complains, you say that like it's a good thing. Chapter 4. LGBT Themes in Marvel Comics Marvel Comics' approach to LGBT themes has undergone changes over the years. In the past, there were restrictive policies like a reported no gays in the Marvel Universe stance in the 1980s. Even in the 1990s, series with solo gay characters had to carry an adults-only label due to conservative protests. However, creators managed to introduce gay characters despite these rules. Notably, Alpha Flight's North Star was Marvel's first major gay character, revealed in 1992. Despite criticism for not showing him kissing a man for many years, the 2011 relaunch finally depicted North Star kissing his boyfriend. In 2012, Marvel made history with North Star's wedding, the first same-sex wedding in mainstream comics. Three years after that, in 2015, Iceman's sexuality was revealed as gay, leading to his ongoing solo series. The Young Avengers series, which debuted in 2005, featured two gay teenager major characters, Hulkling and Wiccan, from its inception. The character's sexuality was criticized by some readers and defended by the writers in an extended series of letters on the title's letters page. The Young Avengers earned Marvel its first GLAAD Award Best Comic Book Award in 2005. The GLAAD Media Award for Outstanding Comic Book is an annual award that honors comic books for excellence in the depiction of LGBT characters and themes. Gay characters are not the only LGBT members of the Marvel comics. Black Widow writer Mark Wade hinted at Bucky Barnes being bisexual in Black Widow issue number 9. One of a group of elite warrior women on Asgard, Valkyrie was introduced in the Thor comics and has also appeared in several Marvel Cinematic Universe films as a bisexual character. Overall, Marvel's journey reflects a transformation in its portrayal of LGBT characters, from earlier restrictions to a more inclusive approach in recent years.
The journey of LGBT representation in comic books has been a dynamic and transformative odyssey, reflecting the evolving perspectives within both the comic industry and society at large. From early restrictions and challenges to the current era of increased inclusivity, the narrative has undergone significant shifts. As we reflect on this journey, it becomes evident that the landscape of LGBT representation in comics has shifted from the shadows to the forefront of storytelling. While challenges persist, the industry has embraced the responsibility to tell diverse stories that reflect the complexities of the real world.